Hello and welcome to our sound interpretation. We chose to play the game Limbo and to discuss the overall sound design that the game uses to influence the player. We start off the game in a messed up world. It's very monochromatic and has limited color palette, but it does a lot with it. There's lots of shadows and depth to it, despite the gray, white, and black atmosphere. So already here, our main character is waking up in this very empty looking world. Okay, so one of the first sounds we notice here is the footprints of our main character. They're not very loud, because he's not very loud, so they don't thud. We hear kind of like an earth, like leaves crushing under his feet as we continue walk walking and it gets softer and softer as we continue. This is done so that the player isn't focused on the sound so much, so that we can hear the other sounds slowly start to incorporate themselves into our world, into our sound. Now with this box, we can interact with it, and we know we can interact with it because it's a distinct sound that appears when we interact with it. More and more of it, it becomes more and more present. So here we have a new element introduced to the game. As the water makes its way into the game, we hear it's almost unnoticeable at first, and then we slowly start to hear it until we actually come up to the pond that we have to get across. Now here we are starting to interact with more and more objects. When we jump onto this boat, for instance, we hear a wooden thud, but when we try to jump on it again, we don't really get that. The water is very, very slowly, very, very slightly starting to fade too. And instead we start hearing animal noises like coming almost to the right of us, so it's ahead of us. It gives off that illusion, especially if you're playing as headphones in. They don't quite sound right though. It helps bring in attention that your character is in a world that still feels wrong. This game is still slowly incorporating different elements to it. Here we're getting more and more of those slice sounds, like when you move the boat on land, only once you listen to it. Now here's where it gets interesting. There's some chirping, and then we see some butterflies, and well... Yeah, that's pretty brutal, actually. What happened here is we were lulled into a false sense of security because of the sounds beforehand, and the image of the butterflies afterward, and then we just didn't even notice the bear trap. Now here we're getting into what this game is actually. It's problem solving and we have to have the player drag this bear trap and then when we do that we hear this scraping metallic noise that's so alien to the rest of the environment it becomes known as what we're trying to go against it becomes an object an obstacle in the way Now here's an example of how this game uses sound to alert the player that there's danger ahead. We heard the rocks falling, and through that we were alerted to the danger of the rock crushing us. Now whether you jump in time is another story. Now again, we're coming up on some water. As we figure out how to get across, we can figure out the water is bad. Some of this might be from our prior knowledge of video games, but it's also the sound that appears, and since we're aware of how we know it can mean danger when a sound appears like that.
Now this is about to get really interesting here. We see an outline of this bear trap in this tree. It's out of our way. We know it's out of our way. And that's a good thing, right? But because of the tension in this game, we know something's not quite right about this being in a tree. And of course, there's a giant spider blocking the way. I don't think we need any help from the audio to know this is bad. But did you hear that sound? It's a little bit hard to miss. Now I'm sure you've heard that. And look, the bear trap is down now. What's great about this is that you didn't even need to see it fall to know that the spider knocked it down. You could just hear it hit the ground. Now we're going to use this bear trap to get rid of the spider that's walking away. Unfortunately, it's a little bit hard to get the hang up the first time. Maybe hard to get used to the second time too. So to hear that metal and the sound of the spider, it might be its blood or it's the metal clamping down on its body parts, but it just sounds so wrong together in this part. So at last we can move on from the spider. It's a bit hard to get rid of that part. It's interesting how we use the sound to fight it off though. How we could tell what it was going to do when we heard it move, we knew it was about to attack. This part coming up is really subtle, but it's such a tense moment with the spider again. I just wanted to note that we can hear some sort of like insects or frogs croaking or something. And even though we can't see them, we can tell there's some sort of pond in between these gaps that we have to jump across.
We know to use this rock to get across to advance in the game, but we only get that split second to hit a tree starting to fall down. Luckily, we can try again. Now, this part is a lot quieter, and at first we can infer that it's for concentration sakes, but we might not even be fully aware of it until the spider comes back. Our good friends here, and it becomes even more tense with the music, that the natural sound of the forest written in our fear of the spider is enough, and we get to hear every sound this guide makes as he's creeping toward us, and he's so quiet about it, it's pretty unsettling. Now, for some reason this is pretty unsettling. We get so excited our character found another person in this world, and we get so excited we run right toward it. The person falling and breaking its neck is so graphic in the sound, you can feel like every detail of it. it makes this world seem more dead and realistic for this little kid, which just seems so much more wrong. Now here, the world is trying to make it even more unsettling if that's possible. Well, I've known I've said that a few times, but this game pretty is pretty unsettling just in general. See, you're, such, you're just this little kid and you're jumping across all these tree forts and it's so silent. But we know that there's something more, there's danger ahead because of the silence. And also because we can see these tree forts in the background. And this trap up here doesn't really say otherwise, but we almost get our head taken off by this wonderful trap. <laughs> So there was the big trap, and now we're hearing the slow bass sound. This note indicates something up ahead is not right. It's, it's a foreshadowing with this sound. You have heard this kind of music before this game. Now, this is a trick, and you might not have been tricked, but I know I was at first. The visual of the spider panics us, but from the sound, we can tell it's wrong that it's not the spider, because the spider has a very natural, animalistic sound, creepy, quiet sound to it. This wooden or metallic spider that we have up here, it sounds artificial. We can see that some person here controlling it, so that we know there's no people in this game. It's not the person that killed themselves earlier, but there's people controlling this world that we're in, and we get the sense that they aren't very friendly. snippet. It's not to play this game blindly. You know it's a very sound dependent game because of the visuals have little to no color to them. I'm not saying the monochromatic palette has no light to it because it certainly does, but the sound tells you what to expect as you play the game. Here comes the real messed up parts of this game. Something is going on and we don't know what, but the atmosphere and the subtle sound design really sucks you in at this part. Now, we haven't fallen in the water before, and when your character drowns or falls in the water, the sounds become murky and unclear. Kind of what it sounds like to actually be swimming and sticking your head underneath the water in real life. Get the sense, and you realize that what you're hearing is what your character is hearing.
just want to comment here on the audible crunch the spider makes. It's kind of painful to listen to. The wind here is very isolating as well, and after the spider is gone, it almost becomes comforting, like you've beaten him. All I'm going to say is that we haven't seen the last of him yet. The slight whooshing sound, while hard to hear before, the kind of wind sound you heard earlier after you walked away from the spider. It goes silent when we see these people, and at last, here comes our friend, Mr. Spider, once again. The spider's guts coming out is just so well done, but it's so gross. And the same happens whenever your character dies, like in the bear trap. It's very fitting, but ugh. Yeah, and here are some more background noises, some cawing, some crows maybe, the sounds of the crates swishing back and forth and then falling once you jump on it. And now we're going to hear some water dripping in a little bit. There's some more water up ahead and water's danger, so we'll see what happens next. That note, that chord that we're hearing right now, that's going to continue on a little bit, is the first bit of like music that we really hear so far on the boat, and it's used in the right spot. The images of what we're seeing, the dead people floating in the water, the situation we're in, what we're coming up against next, it just sort of swells right here. Just going to point out again, as we're about to wrap this up, that metallic clicking of these kind of simple pulleys and tools in that trap that we got stuck in are being set up for another world, another danger in this upcoming part. However, this is a good place to stop for now. At this point, new elements are about to be included, so we're going to end this playthrough right now.